Hello and welcome to part 9 of my series where I try to implement Pong in the Bevy game engine. Uh, as you might see in the background, I have moved to a different apartment, um, which is not the entire reason, but part of why it took me so long to make this video. Um, but I'll try to make a new video once in a while after that. And also apologize for the uh, trams outside passing by. You will hear them throughout the video, but there's nothing I can do about that. So in the meantime, another version of Bevy came out, version 0 0.5. And there's some new stuff. Um, there's physically based rendering, which is nothing that concerns us right now. Uh, we are not using GLTF. This might affect us. The uh, entity component system has been completely rewritten, as it seems. Um, I'm not sure w what this means uh, in, in terms of changing how the code looks, but we'll see. Yeah, I think registering the components might have changed, but we'll see when we update the project um, how this will affect us. Okay, there's now a faster way to do for each, which doesn't use an iterator API, I guess, or at least not a for loop. Okay, but I think for us it's fast enough, we don't need it. Explicit system dependencies. Not sure if we need it right now. System sets. Ambiguity detection and resolution. That's probably nice because um, it gets rid of non-determinism in, in the order in which systems are run, I guess. States v2. We haven't used states yet. We might use it in the future to implement something like a game menu, as you can see here. Not sure how far I will go with this code base. Events have changed. That might make it easier to implement the window change event listening. Local event reader, some event, events, resource, some events. Oh, okay, so just need an event reader for the event. Maybe we'll do some refactoring based on that. Render text, text to debundle. Oh, okay, that's for. Yeah, we don't really need our, our text to move, I guess. Different cameras, render layers, sprite flipping, color spaces. I don't really care about that, it's just black and white. Um, timer improvements, durations instead of F32. Mm -hmm. Window resize constraints. So that might be useful. We can constrain how, how big or small our window can get. And plugins just updated. Firefox plugins. Center, not send tasks. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. Let's first do a um, cargo update. And try to build again. It did build. I probably still need to con change the version in here. Let's do it again. Come on. Oh, it's, it's compiling. That is normal. We haven't implemented that yet. And I already see the first problems. Might just be the IDE though. This takes quite some time, I have to say. Okay, that's where the actual build error started coming in. Let's get started. No print diagnostics plugin in diagnostic. A similar name exists in the module diagnostics plugin. Let's take a look. Bevy diagnostic diagnostics plugin. Log diagnostics plugin that logs to the Console, I guess that's what we're looking for. So it's in, it's called log diagnostics plugin, and it's it should. Oh yeah, um, log diagnostics plugin with default options, debug, wait duration, filter. It's not really explained what they do. Hmm. Whatever, I, I think that debug just makes it print debug log messages that you can ignore in a, rele in a release build or at least uh, configure if you want to print or not. That's that. Let's see. Commands doesn't exist anymore. There's also no query. So the query is just has just moved, I guess. Let's just remove commands and query for now and see if we can just import them like so. Yes. ECS system. The time is now, is it still F32? I'm not sure. Delta seconds. Let's just ask the compiler for help again. This 
function takes zero arguments, but one argument was supplied. That might have to do with the changes in here. Spawn. Okay. World entity operations don't require that user has No, that's not what I was looking for. World spawn. Commands have also been updated to use this new pattern. Commands spawn. Oh, it's just a builder pattern. Is it? Spawn bundle. Oh, okay. So that would be spawn bundle in this case. But no width. Insert bundle, insert bundle. Initial spawn operation also requires a bundle as input. This can be awkward when no components are required or one component is required. These operations have been replaced by entity ref and entity mute, which are builder style wrappers around the world that provide and read write operations on a single pre validated entity. Just insert a single component into the entity. Okay, so this creates one entity with a component and a bundle and then returns the ID D. So probably what I need to do is commands dot spawn dot see dot insert bundle sprite bundle default dot insert or default and that should probably be it I guess yeah and if I wanted to use the entity ID somewhere I could use it but I don't need it right now and I will probably have to update every code that uses spawn Probably like this. Spawn of insert bundle. I guess the, all the bundles have moved somewhere else. <laughs> Spawn paddles will have the same problem. Replace this with with system spawn dot insert bundle dot insert dot insert dot insert just like that. I wonder if we can make our own bundle. Let's just work. Implements bundle. An ordered collection of components commonly used for spawning entities and adding and removing. There's documentation now. Oh my god. <laughs> commonly used for spawning entities and adding and removing components in bulk. You cannot query for a bundle, only individual components within it. Typically, you will you will simply use derived bundle when creating your own bundle. That sounds nice.
Hmm. Yeah, so maybe we can make our own bundles. I'm not sure. Head on. We'll try that after we fix the code. Let's do only one thing at a time. Yes, system commands. Dot insert bundle. Dot insert. Dot insert. Same thing here. System. could just use the prelude but I'm I'm not such a fan of preludes because I really want to know what I'm using Search for text. Is it a widget? I'm not sure if it's the correct text thing. Value font style. I'm not sure. Baby UI widget. Button and cute text. Cute text. Okay. What on earth is a cute text? Let's hope we still get the text to work and and don't have the to do the same thing we did last time again. Let's take a look at text bundle. This will probably tell us what we need to use. Text is a bevy text text. Okay. But it doesn't have the correct or the same properties. Is that correct? No. Vector has an, an allocator property. Interesting. Text alignment, vertical align, horizontal align. And what are sections? String and style. The style is this. So we have one section, um, te wait, text section, we 
Can you not add missing fields? Yes, you can. Use the storeboard text. And the style is probably still a text style. Like that. Is the font in there? Yeah, the font is in here. Like that. The value is up here in the text section and the alignment. Well, I'm not sure about the alignment. Let's see about that. But probably there should be a vertical, wait, a horizontal align center. And that should hopefully just work. Leftmost and rightmost characters are equidistant to the render position. Bounds start from the render position at once, equally left and right. That sounds great. That's probably exactly what I would have needed last time. Commands spawn, insert bundle, and there's no camera T2D bundle like that anymore. Probably just renamed. Camera bundle. Oh. There's a perspective camera bundle, an orthographic camera bundle, and a UI camera bundle. There's no 2D camera bundle anymore. Okay, so this is a UI camera bundle. And this is probably an orthographic camera bundle. It doesn't really matter, I guess, but because it's 2D. Yeah, exactly. Use this for 2D games, isometric games, cat-like 3D views. But there doesn't seem to be a default implementation. New 2D. That looks like what I'm looking for. New 2D. Okay. Next issue. Events. God, this is horrible. <laughs> Window resize listener states. Let's just take a look at the blog post. It will probably tell us how to do this properly. Um, Event ergonomics. Event reader of reader, or event reader of some event for event in reader.iter. So maybe we have our read resize. Let's still call it resize. Let's call it reader. Whatever. Move this. Move that. And reader. Resize. Window resized.
Let's take a look at the event reader in API. Iter, iter with ID. Double ended iterator. Yeah, let's just do do it like this dot iter dot last. Okay. Window resize listener state. Insert resource. Okay, there is, this is our own system, I guess. I'm not sure if we need this anymore. Let's just remove it for now. So what's the problem with setup? Why is setup not a system anymore? Is this actually implemented? Probably parallel system descriptor. No. T. Let's take a look at the um, examples in the GitHub repository. Let's go to the 05 tag and go to the example code. Hello world, cross platform examples. Games. Let's take a look at breakout again. It's startup system setup dot system commands materials at asset server. Oh, 
Oh. That's the problem. Is it? Yes. Is commands clone? seems like it's compiling not sure if the event uh, listener still works for the for the window but we'll see that doesn't look too great and it crashed It's not nice. Consider merging conflicting queries into a query set. Yeah, but I think we don't even get the proper window resize events anymore. Take a look at the at an example for event listening. How did we you do keyboard input again? Keyboard input is just a resource. Okay, so that's not the problem. Event. Init resource event trigger state. At event. Order. And let's print something if our event handler actually gets called. doesn't implement debug. Okay, it immediately crashes. Very mutable bevy sprite, bevy transform, pong wall, pong window resize listener.
Oh, okay. So what is a query set? Yay, very nice. I have absolutely no clue what this is trying to tell me. Yeah, I guess this will just be another one of those episodes where I do not make any progress at all. Um, yes. Guide, just a guide and event. Oh, there's some explanation here. Component is just in rest, no, normal Rust data type. Position. Entity is a collection of components with a unique ID. Yeah, I know that. A shared global piece of data is a resource. System runs logic on entities, components, and resources. Layer score. Okay, there's a query for many player and score. Take a look at the event example again. This is the trigger, this is the listener. Let's for now just listen for the events without actually mutating anything. So the event handler definitely gets called, but something in the way I do the queries is doing is creating a problem. Okay, if I resize what? If I resize, it just breaks. Great. Let's add paddles and see if, if it still breaks. It does not immediately crash. Only on resize it will crash. So that's progress, I guess.
and now it immediately crashes. So it doesn't like me having two queries with sprites in them, I guess. Let's take a look. Let's just... Hmm. Yeah, because they, I could take references to the same thing. Is there an example on how to use query sets? Nope, there is not immediately. Query set, no query set here. Change detection, event, fixed time step. Interesting, but whatever. Hierarchy of parents and children, entities. Parallel iterator, removal detection, startup system. <clears throat> States. Timers. So what does this do? We have a query with pedal and transform. Or query. Scoreboard query. Oh, this is kind of like what we're trying to implement actually. <laughs> um, So this is a ball transform and sprite and a an entity collider transform and sprite. Maybe we just need different systems to update different components. Maybe that's the point. I'm not quite sure. But that would be one idea of how to maybe fix this. Resize pedal positioning. Let's just try this out. We have a resize reader like before and just the paddles like this. We have the same if condition, but we only need. width and height, remove that print line and only update the paddles in this one. And then we'll do a different one that only handles when you resize some wall positioning, which doesn't have the paddles but has the walls. I don't think that's how it's supposed to work, but let me just try if that actually fixes the problem or if it's just completely different from my mental model. And let's try. 
window resize pedal positioning and wall positioning. Okay, so it doesn't crash immediately anymore. It only crashes when I actually move something. So let me do that for all components. I have goals and balls. positioning with the ball query and the ball update code. No, I didn't want to remove that, just copy it. Why is it crashing immediately? Can I maybe just disable Vulcan for now? GPU, so on and so forth. Nothing to update either. So why is it crashing? Okay, so if I do not listen for the events at all, for the resize events, wait, what? Okay. Um, yeah, then maybe this was just completely wrong. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Seems like it's working again. Wow. Now let's find out how these query sets work. Because I don't really want to write a new um, function for everything, a new system for every thing that happens on a window resize.
very set. So a tuple of zero or more queries is already a query set. It implements system param for system parameters, which makes sense. And that's it. I'd really like to have some example for that. Let's get an up-to-date version of Bevy. Let's go to the examples. Or maybe just check out 0 0.5. Git check out v0.5.0. Like that. Let's go through the examples. Oh, I'm, I'm already in the examples directory and search for Query set alien cake addict. Okay, let's take a look. Alien games. There was a game section alien cake addict. Change the focus of the camera. Transforms, query set, transform camera, camera and query transform. And how is it used? Transforms. Oh no. <laughs> Q1. Isn't, isn't that great? Um, yeah. I, I I've seen I've seen better um, I have to say I don't really like that okay that's what you see here Q0 Q0 mute Q0 Q1 oh my god this looks absolutely horrible I I really have to um, I really have to say and it goes up to four. And we have exactly I mean this doesn't scale. We have paddle, wall, goal and ball, which is exactly four. But come on. That can't be it. This really cannot be it. Query set state, query set... Seriously? I'm, I'm probably just doing something completely incorrectly and shouldn't do it like that, but from what I understand at the moment, um, this is how it's gonna be. So let's do that. Let's make a query set. Of all these queries. Panels. Walls, goal, and wall. Like 
that. Hybrids equals query set dot q zero mute walls equals query set dot q one mute paddles equals query set dot q two mute I probably cannot do that because of the um, lifetimes but but we'll see about that. Goals and balls is query set q3 mute. Yeah, of course we cannot do that because it's one set. But it's just a reminder for now. Wrong number of arguments. Oh, this needs to be a tuple. Yeah, great. Absolutely fantastic. Let's try like that. Maybe the semantic um, borrow checker. What was the name? Was it semantic borrow checker? Whatever. The may maybe um, it will work like that um, since it sees that this borrow is not used here anymore, so it might work. And this is only one ball. Okay. Then comment out these and register to the systems. It works. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really not happy with that, but that's how it's gonna be for now. Okay. But this means we actually have it working again. Any more warnings except for this one? Not that I see. Maybe remove the print line stuff. Run it again. Let's, let's move that around just because so just just to be clear I, I do understand what the problem is and I can explain it if you don't 
understand it yet either. So, of course, when you um, when you write uh, write Rust code, you you need to ensure that you have only one mutable reference to any um, to any object at one time, or at least reference that you, you you need to be sure that you can only access it mutably in one context on one thread or. At, at the time and if if not you need some synchronization like a mutex or something like that um, since we have sprites and transforms in every single one of these um, queries um, there's there's nothing preventing us from creating an entity that has for example a ball and a wall component to it which means if we have a a ball that is a wall we would be able to have a mutable reference to the sprite of the wall um, and to the same with the ball so you have one entity there is a wall and a ball and we could come up with um, end up with the same mutable reference to the, to the exactly same sprite component and that would actually break the um, the uh, guarantees of the Rust language, which is why the query set enforces this by only giving us mutable references to one of these queries at, at, at one time. Because once I call q0 mute, um, this has mutably borrowed the query set, which means I cannot call any of these other methods anymore I, un, until I finished using this um, this paddles reference here, which I'm finished here, so um, it, it's fine to call call Q1 after that. If I were to move this up here, it wouldn't compile because it's still borrowed mutably. Second mutable borrow occurs here, as the compiler is telling me. So I'm I'm not quite quite sure how I want a proper solution to look like, but this is not re really it. Maybe I can somehow derive system parameter. Wait. Maybe I can do that. I'm not quite sure. Let's let's take another look and and find usages of system param. Where's my terminal window? Oh, I've closed it. Okay, there's actually a system param example. So this might just be the solution to this awkwardness. So here's a query. Yeah, let's first commit this because it's working. <laughs> and after that, I can um, play around with that. So, um, the ball has changed the goal. In main, I want everything. In paddle, I want everything. In score, I want everything except this, except this struct here. But it's not finished yet. Stage this so everything except the struct will be committed. And same here. So um, commit message is update to bevy 0 0.5. Just like that. You can't see that because of uh, my face 
that's in the way. I, I mean, I could probably move it around. Yeah, whatever. This is actually where I type in the commit messages. Okay. Now let's try to create our own system parameter. Um, what do we call it? Entities to be resized. Um, to be resized query. Query to be resized. Whatever. Let's just do it. Let's not think about the, the actual name too much. Um, we have these queries. But this will probably not work as well because this will not fix the um, the ownership problem. Paddles. Walls. Goals. And wall. It's singular. Missing lifetime specifier. Oh. So every query has a lifetime specifier. Let's use the, the regular tick A. that and of course every single reference also we can use a static lifetime reference a static reference oh okay for the player because it doesn't have any data <laughs> Why was I taking a reference to the player? I thought the player was just... Oh, the player has a value. But it's... It should be okay to just copy it. I mean... Yeah. Let's do that. And... The trade word query is not implemented for player. Okay, too bad. Seems like I still need a reference. And everything has the exact same lifetime, I guess. This is this is still looking like shit. And it probably won't even work because this would just break the um, lifetime guarantees, uh, the, the ownership guarantees again. Let's see if it actually compiles without using it. And then after that. Mute to be resized, query to be resized. To be resized on panels. To be resized at walls. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why I'm trying that. It 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 won't work. Oh, 
Oh, I still need to derive system parameter. ECS system, system param. Earlier I was talking about not liking preludes, but here I'm using one. Uh, sounds like I'm a hypocrite. Or maybe just my... Um, Does not fulfill lifetime requirements. Uh, what? Type must satisfy the static lifetime. Conflicting requirements. So let's say I replace this with Static. This, I'm, I'm just guessing now. And then put the A here. This is horrible. Can't leak private type. What? Oh, okay. It does compile, but it will probably just crash immediately when running. Yeah. As I suspected. Conflicts, conflicts with previous system parameter, allowing this would break Rust's mutability. So yeah, as I, as I said, this, this just wasn't going to work in the first place, so yeah. So what we were trying to do was actually render the score in some way. We have a scoreboard. The score is a global resource. I think that was what we were trying to do last time. Oh, maybe you can just take a look at what breakout does. Insert resource scoreboard score zero. Insert resource. Let's just do that. The score is public. Where do they do that? At the beginning, after the plugins, before the startup system. Insert resource score. Does it have the default? Not yet. But now it has. So now we should have a score resource. Collider setup. We have wall collisions. Do we have a wall collision system? Wait. If I remember correctly, the ball is already bouncing. So there is a collision system. Oh, there it is, ball collision system. Collider. Okay. 
but what we do need is a gold collision system essentially which is similar to the ball collision system but it works differently um, goal collision it's probably not the best name for now but it'll do why is this mutable? this doesn't need to be mutable Query of a ball sprite transform and sprite not sure if we need all of those but we'll see about that Include all of these. Then we need a collider query. Actually, it's a goal query, which means we need. Collider transform sprite and goal. Like that. And also we need the resource uh, score. Uh, resource score that should be it maybe yeah that should that should be it so for all balls you know, for ball or transform and call sprite in ball query dot iterm on a mute without mute sorry for the German there um, for every ball we go over the list of goals for on a small collider, collider transform. maybe our goals don't even need a collider component <laughs> now that I'm looking at it um, goal transform and goal sprite in Go query dot iter, iter that collision equals collide A and B. We have ball transform dot translation. We have the ball sprite dot size. We have the goal transform dot translation and the gold transform gold sprite dot size and that gives us our collision and also the goal I think the goal also has a player component we need that as well. Let's remove the collider.
actually we didn't we we didn't even add a collider so this doesn't matter anyway so remove the collider gold transform gold sprite the goal itself and the player if let some collision equals collision How do I mutate the score? Is there a res mute? Oh, there is. Score dot. Ref mute dot. We're just matching. So match player where's the player left and right? Play uh, asterisk left means score dot deref mute dot left plus equals one. This is probably completely bullshit, but we'll see about the the proper way to access the resource. So maybe the, the this should just trigger an event and the event handler should update the score. I'm not quite sure about that. Because when when this happens, the scoreboard needs to update and all that stuff. So probably this should just emit an event. What is this complaining about? Expected expression. Whatever. Oh. Of course. And use import collider. Let's remove that. And use import resource. Let's use res mute in here. that and use the variable collision if collision that is some um, that's all I need Where does collide come from is there an easier way no Just never used, so let's add the system.
Okay. That doesn't tell us anything. Just just as a quick hack, let's add the the score resource here. Res score. And print it every time the window resizes. Display trade for that. Implement members. Come on. I don't know why they use just a regular F, but it's horrible. Whatever. Right format uh, and use self dot left and self dot right. That should just be it, just like that. Um, oh, yeah, let's dereference it first. Because it's just a wrapper type and it doesn't forward um, the display trade. I mean, you could just do something like okay, okay this is not adaptable, but you could just add a conditional display trade for types that implement display. Maybe I'll do that and make a pull request. Let's see. Okay, so once we resize the window, we should see the current score, which is 0 to 7? What? Okay... 0 to 15. Let's score on the other side. Let's see. 9 to 15. <laughs> um, that's not exactly what I was trying to achieve, but it's something. The problem is probably that it tries to collide on every single frame. And we need to debounce this. So probably it will add 1 to the score for every single frame where, um, where it hits. But this could probably just be fixed by um, by resetting the game once um, once we hit the goal, and this will mean that it won't trigger um, the code anymore. So let's call this a success for now. Let's remove that and that. Or maybe just let it in. I mean, we can remove it later. Compile again to see if it's it's still working. And since I'm already at 1 hour and 30 minutes, I should probably stop the video at this point. Um, yeah, commit it. I remove this, move this somewhere else. Um, we have the score, we have the score resource, we have the global, the goal collision system, 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 what? That's not what I intended to do. Collision system, system, great. 
<laughs> Let's um, rename that real quick. Yeah, to do this properly, this probably needs to send an, an event, some kind of score event. And maybe the, the redraw also needs to happen based on some kind of event. Which, which actually would make a lot of sense because the thing I had where, where I um, split this into different resize listeners is probably the better design because I could just put my listener in, in this wall thingy here and, and call this special update after window resize code inside of there. So maybe my complaints just go away by me making better software or better design, I guess. So at that point, I want to apologize to the Bevy maintainers. They probably just wanted me to make better software. But you'll see that in, in the next video, probably. Um, yeah, let's take another look. It now doesn't, it's still system.system, .system, but that's okay for now. At that, at the goal. Initial buggy score tracking. Just like that. And with that, I want to say thanks for watching. Um, thanks for being patient for me taking so long to, to make another video and hopefully see you next time.